Welcome back, Stasa 23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And before I get started, I got to say, this is the first Christmas gift anybody's ever sent me from the channel, and I was left speechless. I mean, this is super cool, and not even he didn't just send me this, okay? With it's it's a uh, like you know printed on there. Um, and then he also, I'm sure he, he must have watched some of my older videos. I have a, a wrapped, custom wrapped leather Zippo that I changed the insert. And not only did he change the insert, he put a double burner in there. Whoop. Check that out. Awesome. So whoever sent me this, I wish I could, uh, you know, acknowledge you on the channel. But I understand if you don't want to be, that's totally fine. Uh, but if you happen to, please, please leave a comment down below if you sent me this. Um, I, I tried to go through my emails because somebody asked me recently my address and I just can't remember. I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out. <laughs> so there you go. We're going to start off. Put this over here. Absolutely. Just our, our community is so awesome. And also, I'd like to say thanks for such an awesome 2021 as far as, uh, you know, talking with you guys and girls you know, through comments and stuff like that, DMs and e emails, all that. It's been a lot of fun, and let's hope 20, 2022 is a much better year, and we see a lot more newer things out there. Today's video is going to be my $300 and up knives from 2021. I guess you could call it the favorites, um, top 10, whatever you want to call it. These are the ones that weren't on my favorite purchases pretty much. Some of them might have been, so forgive me if they are. But we're going to start off with some honorable mentions because these are really good folders. And I'd say why. I didn't really add them on the list. First one is coming from uh, Benchmade. And it is the Benchmade Tengu uh, Gold Class uh, version. I think it's a beautiful knife. It's you know, it's a love it or hate it. You either love the knife or you don't. I happen to like the knife. The action on this knife is outstanding. I think the Damascus is beautiful, and I don't really like Damascus. Um, it's functional. If you didn't see my review and testing of this knife, definitely go check it out. The knife did excellent. The flat detent on here makes this knife rock it out. Now, of course, it's a bench made. It's a USA made knife uh, with some somewhat fancy materials. I wish they would have went with titanium hardware, but it's just coated stainless. I wish they would have went with titanium liners, but that's just coated stainless. Uh, the backspace there, I could take it or leave it. It's that meteorite, Raffir Noble, I think. Um, and for me, the biggest downfall with this knife was no pocket clip. I, one day I'll get around to adding the pocket clip that I wanted to, but other than that, I think it's a, a good knife. I carry it in a little slip that I got from Amazon. don't really remember what company um it has a fisher space pen spot right there i use the stylus all the time on there uh cool knife it stays in a pack actually and it gets used a good little bit uh these knives ran 550 bucks and that's a lot a lot of money for you know not having all premium materials uh and no pocket clip you know that's a that's a personal preference there and i understand why they didn't put a pocket clip because jared ozer is you know a traditional guy but there is my first honorable mention now right, we have four more honorable mentions we'll start with left to right first up is the a purpose blades um, zerks integral um, when I bought the knife when I got I got in on the pre-order uh, I don't know I guess just the plainness of it kind of didn't excite me at the moment because I had other knives that were much more enticing at the moment. So this knife kind of, you know, got brushed over for me. And once, you know, I, I everything kind of calmed down and I was able to really carry and use this knife and get that full effect of that deep hollow grind on this knife, uh, I kind of fell in love with the knife. I like the fact that it's an integral. Just cool to have. I don't have a bunch of integrals. That doesn't really you know, excite me that much. Excellent action on here. Super great ergos. Uh, and just like I said, that cutting power is just amazing. If you aren't following Adam Purvis, do yourself a favor and definitely keep an eye on him. He does some really awesome work. I, I think I own three or four of his uh, designs 
and I love every single one of them. The Primordial, the, uh, what is it? The, I got the Primordial MK2, I think. And the, I can't think of the other one, but there's another one that I have as well. Both awesome knives, and this one is as well. These came in at around $390. I didn't put it on the list because I don't know if he's going to be doing these anymore. And I tried my best to kind of keep those off of here. Um, but awesome knife and definitely a person to follow if you, you know, if you're into like this kind of knife. Uh, next up. Probably one of, this is in that top three for me of the favorite knives that I got uh, in 2021. This is the Vero Engineering Frame Lock Axon um, with a hand rub satin blade and just some just some plain Jane uh, stone wash titanium scales. I absolutely love pretty much everything Vero's done. Uh, their OEM is Best Tech, and Best Tech, when I say knock these out of the park, every single knife that I've gotten from Vero Engineering has been an absolute home run for me, you know, and you, your mileage may vary, you might not like this, that's totally cool, that's something that some people just have to understand, we're not going to like the same things, and just because you don't like it, you don't have to trash it, and if you do, that's fine, but, you know, you, you can't get mad because I don't like your favorite knife, because it's your favorite knife. You know, if I happen to be, it happens to be mine, then that's awesome. But we're, we're all going to like different stuff. Awesome knife, in my opinion. That's my opinion. Very fidgety. That, that little window thing is genius. And I think Joe Zavero is a genius as well. Just the innovation, marketing tactics, and everything. Absolutely uh, astonishing what he's done in this short period of time. For good reason. Uh, the, these went for, I think around $325. Only reason once again, that this did not make it on the list because I'm not sure if he's doing the frame locks again. I could be wrong. If he is, I, this would have definitely been, you know, on the list, maybe number one on the list. I don't know, but that is the Vero engineering axon frame lock. Next up is the Richard Rogers OEM slim. Y'all saw this in my favorite purchases of 2021. And that's one of the reasons why it didn't make the list. And another one, because I don't think he's doing these anymore. Uh, I absolutely love this one. I had to get mine off the secondary market from an awesome uh, subscriber of mine. It's just a small, you know, great gentleman's carry, uh, light duty EDC blade uh, that are going for a ridiculous premium uh, on the secondary. I, do I think they're worth it? No. Uh, whatever he sold them for that I would you know of course you're gonna have to pay a somewhat of a premium but I would not go that high over it I mean it's just I guess it just depends on how much you love Richard Rogers and I get it if you you know decide to buy one of those heavily inflated on the secondary you know if you want what you want and you get what you get so uh, that's the Richard Rogers OEM slim so like I said these three didn't make it on the list because they're, I don't think they're going to be available again. All righty. Now we have the Vehement Knives Mongrel. I hate to say this, and I'm not trying to bash on them, but this was my most let down knife of 2021. Um, because I, I think it, it's a beautiful looking knife. I love a good clip point. CPM 3V is one of my favorite blade steels. It's made by Medford, so it's a USA made beauty uh, but there's just a few things that fell very sharp for me. Once again, if you have the knife and you love it, that's awesome. I, I'm not putting anybody down for loving the knife. I'm just saying for me, it was a, a, a fail. Uh, but that said, the fact that this is his first folding design, his, his fixed blades are off the rails awesome. But the fact that this is his first folder is uh very promising and i definitely will not give up on vehement knives um, all my u.s makers i try to support them in any way possible and um if he comes out another folder i'll probably pick it up you know and if that one misses i'll probably get rid of it i may i'll probably get rid of this one the next time i do a knife sale but um like i said for me 
you know, you can go watch the review if you if you want to know why it was a fail for me. But there you go. That's my honorable mentions, and let's get into the uh, the top ten. All right, first up, we have one coming from Leon Ma, and it's the Leon Ma Field Duty. Um, this would have made it probably close into my top three, which I'm going to give y'all at the end of this video. Um, but it kind of fell short, and I had to push it almost to the end, or on this case, to the end of the pile, because mine uh, came, it's not super smooth, and mine, that's the most centered you can get, which is pretty close. I've done a lot of stuff to try to center this knife, and I'm pretty good at centering a knife. I'm not <laughs> trying to toot my own heart, but I've taken apart my fair share of knives, and, you know, I don't know, maybe it has the wrong size washer or something, who knows. Uh, L Max blade steel. I love that blade shape. It's kind of like a Strider esque or like a Spider Co leaf shape. Uh, excellent for uh, this choke up position right here. And I just feel like I can get so much power. All the cutting I've done with this, this wide handle scale, even though it's flat, it's fairly comfortable. I got nice softened edges on the sides. Uh, made by Riot, and everybody knows they're you know one of the best overseas uh, manufacturers out there right now. Uh, it has a very snappy action. It, it, it's got a lot of things I like about it. I love the size of the knife. And when I say this thing, I just sharpened her up again. Ooh, I mean, it, it grabs skin as soon as I touch it. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yep, I could easily cut myself with that. But uh, very cool knife. It is a little pricey, but, you know, it's anytime you have a designer that uh has an oem make it and they sell they're gonna inflate the price you know more than you normally see these came in at 309 dollars i don't think it's absurd but it, it is a little reply price i don't like the finishing on the g10 i think it was a little sloppy there you, you could either it's because it's very very slick uh, so if you're gonna go that far just polish it you know i i don't know leave either leave a little texture or polish but uh, awesome, awesome EDC knife. I can't, that's, that's the most I can say about it. That is Leon Ma Field Duty EDC. All right, next up, number nine, coming from Terrain365, and that is the Otter Flip. This knife was able to stay on the list because I just, I love a good pin shaped blade. I love it. I think it's beautiful. Uh, this is a completely rust proof knife. It's, it's made, the blade's made of teravantium, which is a dendritic cobalt steel, so it's not going to rust on you ever. And you have titanium scales, uh, carbonized lock face, uh, pretty comfortable ergos because it is contoured and softened uh, edges. I'm not sure the OEM, I asked them, uh, I thought it was best tech, but they i think they said it was somebody else this time i don't know but the knife is is pricey because of the teravantiums coming in at 329 dollars and if you like this knife if i were you <laughs> i would wait to see if prometheus which is you know the the other half of this company pretty much um puts out their own and when they do they usually put like carbon fiber and m390 that's something i probably should have done to see but i don't know being that this knife doesn't seem to have got too much traction in the community um we'll see I, if so i might sell this one and try to pick up one of those because i like i said i love that blade shape i'm not the huge i'm not the biggest fan of teravantium e I sharpened, I sharpened this one up the other day. It wasn't the easiest to sharpen it up, I'll be honest. And I just don't like, it loses that initial like super sharpness like very, very quick. It, and that, that's, it's, that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to have, you know, a good, very toothy edge for a while. I haven't really noticed that, but I don't know. Maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way. So that is the uh, Train 365 Outer Flip coming in at $329. All right, coming in at number eight, we have, we're going to do two on the number eight spot because they're both from the same company, and you'll see what I'm talking about. First up is the Boker M4 uh, Sherman and the Rexford Collection Epicenter. Uh, both of these, I thought, were cool in their own right. Uh, this one right here, 
this is going to be, I, I decide, you know, I have enough knives. I don't need to destroy this one. Uh, this one has damage steel that's made up of, you know, I forgot what the exact steel is. And it has M4 uh, Sherman tank steel in there. And that is just amazing. Uh, the Those are supposed to be kind of looking like the tracks of the tank. And you have the, the burlap micarta to give that old look. You have the the tracks of the tank for the pivot and it has that old uh you know just that rustic look on the back side things i don't like is that terrible edge termination uh that they went with steel here instead of titanium because of the price uh this thing runs i think it's like yeah 359 dollars that's a lot of money for a knife that's going to sit in a display thing that they send it in but you know i'm I'm okay with doing that. Um, I don't know if you can still get these or not. That's why I kind of, it's why as far as it is. And another one, the Boker Epicenter. This is the Rexford Collection 2021 Epicenter. It's their special run one. The reason why this one was a must to me, for me to get is because the first Boker Epicenter that they did was hot garbage. I mean, it, every one of them played with Lock Rock and just... It was super heavy, and I've always loved uh, all of Rexford's, Rexford's designs, and the Epicenter was such a beautiful knife, in my opinion. So whenever they did this one, and I saw, I think these were made in Italy for them, and I think the other ones were made in China. This one right here is the best, like, what? just watch this action. Super, super smooth action. Very, very smooth. Uh... Only thing that I didn't like about it is it was a single thumb stud. I added this double stud right here, just temporary, because I'm going to try to find something nicer one day. Uh, because the original thumb stud was uncomfortable for my thumb, and I wanted to be able to spidey flick it, you know, and now I can easily spidey flick it. Uh, I think one thing that makes this knife so smooth, because I've seen almost any knife that has this, it, it is ridiculously smooth. I don't know if you'll better see that. Yeah, right in there. There. Let me see if I got a, something I can shine on here. Yeah. The detent ball is one of those white ceramic detent balls. And I don't know why more companies don't use that because this thing is ridiculous smooth. And it, I think it has a lot to do with that uh, that white ceramic detent ball. So there's the two bokers. The epicenter was very expensive for what it was. came in at $412. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I almost, I had expected to buy it and sell it, but I kind of fell, fell in love with it. So it's going to stick around in the collection. So there you go. That's number eight. Number seven, we have the Sharp by Designs Evo Typhoon and the Evo Typhoon Micro. I don't know if these came out in 2021, but I received this one in 2021. I was lucky enough that a friend sold me this one. And I was lucky enough to get this micro at Blade Show from the man himself. Um, these knives are incredible. If you've never experienced a Brian Nadeau Sharp by Design knife, do yourself a favor. If you can, if you get a chance to at least handle one, do yourself a favor. It is awesome. Every I own this one, this one. I got a Tempest on the way. I got I own a Void, and. I didn't know I did I didn't try them out for a while because I was just I didn't know enough about their knives. But now, once I got one of them in hand, the fever hit me, and I absolutely love love everything pretty much that he's come out with. It's got a unique uh, detent system. It's like a nub. It's very uh, snappy action, comfortable in hand. Pretty much every one of them smooth as butter. Um, this one is just, oof, got a hand rub, satin blade, sorry if you hear the dogs, uh, silver twill inlay, and this one has a green micarta inlay. I know these, I think, ran $350. I think these were right at around $400. I, I, don't quote me on that. It could have been a little more, a little less, but it was somewhere in that range. Uh, the only reason they're not any higher is just because I don't, I want to, once again, I'm not sure if you can get these or not. But if you get a chance, definitely do yourself a favor and pick one up. You won't be disappointed, I promise. Uh, they have a few different blade shapes. You have this, one of the sexiest uh, clip point blades right here. 
Bowie, whatever you want to call it, and a, a, a sexy Japanese Tanto, I think, and I don't know what the other one is, but awesome, awesome knives. All right, this is another knife that really came out in 2020, but I picked it up uh, right at the beginning of the year, so I, I added it to the list. This is the McNeese Knives PM Max 2, uh, the one, you know, with some of the extra stuff on it ran around $467 and yes that is very expensive and there are some things on this knife that I can't stand like that just terrible edge termination but the reason why I put this on here is because first of all I love the knife it's so smooth and I love 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 a thumb deployer I mean stupid smooth comfortable for as small as it is and it's better known made in the great US of A uh, Brian, I mean, uh, is it Brian McNeese? I don't, I don't, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not good with names. CPM 20 CV, I, I put this artisan clip on there, it doesn't come with that, but I just thought it looked nicer. Um, uh, I'm showing this one because he, he's come out with a three and a half inch, and that's one that I can't wait to get my hands on because he fixed the issues that I have with this knife, he fixed this. Uh, terrible edge termination right there and in a bigger format I think it just works a little bit better uh, several of my friends already have those quite jealous of them <laughs> but uh, this is the McNeese knife PM Mac 2 it's not a it's not a custom it's a machine ground knife um, like I said coming in at four and sixty seven dollars this particular one you can get them uh, down a little bit cheaper than that but there you go all right, coming in number five, uh, got it in a Chris Reeves slip right now because I was carrying it the other day. Uh, this one is a gift from my wife and uh, coming in at number five, we have this absolutely stunning William, William Henry uh, B10 Reverso with the Woolly Mammoth inlay and the Stainless Damascus, I think it is. Just look at that. It's a San Mai Damascus. Forgot what the core is. Oh, no, the core, I'm sorry, the core ZDP-189. Uh, just one of the most beautiful gentleman's carry knife I've ever seen. My wife's a rock star. This stuff, the, the inlays alone are just, just mind-blowing. Uh, not something I would have picked up for myself, but sometimes those are the best gifts. Uh, super cool. Very pricey. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know the exact price of this one because I didn't buy it, but... Just know they're used. This is over a thousand dollars. I know this. You know that's gonna be off the map for some people, a lot of people, and that's fine. I I understand that because I it, it was the longest time before I spent you know over two hundred dollars on a knife. So there you go. That is William Henry B10 Reverso in the number five spot. Number four is the Demco 8020 for me. Uh, this knife represents everything hard use I, I can even imagine <laughs> this thing is my one knife that if I had to take something to battle and I didn't want it to break this is, would be it and the the invention of the shark lock by Andrew Demko is a, a very cool innovative lock and keeps keeps the knife community um, to not get stale not be boring uh, we need more people creating cool things or just making you know old things better in some way and Andrew Demko does that time and time again uh, he, he he will always make my list if if he has something new this one I, once again I think this one came out actually uh, at the end of 2020 I, I'm not mistaken if I'm not mistaken I have a pops custom deep carry clip on there uh, this one is in crew wear that shark lock, just listen to that thing. I love the clanks. <laughs> it's just a beast. Uh, this is not a custom. It's a machine ground. Uh, comes in at four hundred twenty-five dollars. These these come and go. You know they're 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 popular for you know good reason. Andrew Demko is an awesome dude. USA made here in his shop. Um, awesome knife. It's not going to be no great slicer. It's very thick behind the edge, but it, it can get the job done, uh, whether it's, you know, slicey task or if you need a beat on it. 
This is one that I still need to review, but that's Andrew Demko, AD20, with the cool shark lock. In the number three spot, I like this knife so much I bought two of them, and this is the Attention to Detail a Mark I uh, Medium, and this one is the one that I'm currently, I just finished up the testing on it, and I have to film and edit the uh, conclusion of the knife, and... I I fell in love with the the overall design of these knives. This one's just a you know a, a normal grind on this one, and this one has a blade hole and it has a malt, uh, nightmare grind if you want to call it. Um, him and Mick Strider are good friends. Uh, the owner of Attention to Detail, uh, I think it's is it Doug. Um, yeah, Doug Espinoso, I think it is. He is a longtime veteran, uh, a longtime veteran of the Marines, and his wife is also uh, a veteran. And I think they have over 20 years together, which is absolutely outstanding. And I appreciate your service, sir. Um, he makes a hard use knife. They're both; these two are both in 3V. He uses other steels. I just I like 3V, so I chose that. I love how this one has the two deployments. Uh, I thought this one looked cool. The The texture on here, it's a little aggressive for my hands, um, it, but it's not not too bad to where I can't use it. I decided to test this one just because it's easy to sharpen. I sharpened this one up uh, so I could give it a fair go because I, I had used it a good bit before I even started the testing. Um, this texture right here, I think it's called this barbell texture. And uh, he, you can see he like knocked the peaks off of it. So this one's nice and comfortable. Just depending on, you know, doing the wood cutting where it was kind of like, you know, twisting the hand. This part kind of hurt, hurt my hands, but look, look at my hands, you know. Uh, I added this clip. You can buy one just like that from his site. Uh, this is an artisan clip, but I added to it. Just it felt better in my hands and in my pocket. This one has broken in nicely. It's probably gotten the most carry uh, of the two. Just because, like I said, this is a more traditional blade shape. Uh, he has another design that just came out that I will be picking up eventually. These are full customs, and they're not cheap by any means. I think um, I think I paid eight hundred dollars for this one at Blade Show this year, and uh, he gave me a deal because I bought two of them. I think he gave me this one for six hundred. Uh, so yeah, not cheap by any means, but uh, very, very nice quality. And he's only been made, he's only been making folders for, I think a, a couple of years now. Um, and that's, that's outstanding. Started with the fixed blades and those are pretty amazing as well. It's attention to detail, mercantile, mark one medium. All right. My number two and my number one went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. These two can both be number one because they are that great. And number two, coming in from Varga Knives, is the Varga VBR. I think I showed this one in my uh, favorite purchases of 2021. Uh, it just had to be in this video. Um, it, it, it's kind of reminiscent somewhat of like a, uh, a hinderer with that Spanto tip right there. But man, this, this uh, hollow grind is nice and slicey. Uh, it started out with some green micarta uh, coverage right here, and now it has some Arctic Storm, I think it is, fat carbon. And man, that just made it even classier looking. M390, uh, very, very smooth action. These are made by Riot, far organized, comfortable in hand. The clip works good, looks good. Just an awesome overall, overall knife. I think he's going to do more of these. I think he he does, he does he drops some on his site here and there. Uh, if you want to know more about this, go DM him. Uh, Mr. Varga is a very, very nice guy. And um, I was lucky enough to get one of these from one of my subscribers who thought I would be interested in it. So that is the Varga Knives of VBR, which stands for Varga by Riot. Excellent action. Just an outstanding, outstanding knife. The number one knife was one that came out literally, I think, in December at the end of the year, or the pre-order got filled at least then, but it didn't make my top 10 list because I, I didn't have any carry time with it, so that's why it it is the number one knife for me because I just love this knife. 
and it's coming from Mr. Brian Brown. This is the Jaeger M. Um, I just purchased a Raptor from him, um, and I cannot wait because I I love this knife. Love it, love it, love it. Um, the the action on this thing is outstanding. Probably needs to be cleaned. The hollow grind on this thing. <laughs> When I say it's nice and thin, this thing slices out just amazing. Uh, I added this, um, I think it's Mokotai clip to it. I think that just kind of set it off. The M stands for, I think, micarta here. Um, I went with the flipper because I wanted to be able to use both of them. And if I ever decided I wanted to not have a flipper tab on there, I'll remove it. Uh, M390, I think, on the blade steel. These ran... Trying to think what these ran when they were, they were I think, $348. Uh, well worth it. And if you haven't, if you haven't checked out Brian and you're not following him, don't, don't waste any more time. Definitely go check him out. He's a super, super nice guy. And his designs just do it for me. I think they're beautiful. So that is the top 10, uh, 300 and over for 2021 for me. Um, let me know which one of these is your favorite and what was your favorite purchase overall of 2021. I, I love hearing what y'all have to say uh, and sometimes I get ideas of what I might want to buy next. So leave it down below which one of mine is your favorite and uh, which one was your favorite pickup of 2021. And if you sent me this, let me. If, if you don't want to uh, be known in the comments, just send me uh, uh, another email. Cause man, this is the nicest thing anybody's ever done for me on, on the channel. Um, just absolutely amazing. Everybody who donates stuff to the channel or gives something, I, I, I'm, I'm speechless. I've never had something like that happen to me before. So. There you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. Hope everybody's having an absolute amazing, amazing day. Great Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody. And uh, we'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.